What's up divas and divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Funny thing is it's actually Monday. I decided to record a day early because I just was in that mood and I was like, you know what? Let me just get this out the way and do this video already. You know what I'm saying? So I did come back from New York um, Wednesday, late night Wednesday um, because I left early, early Saturday morning and I had like this amazing time um, with the RPG show Me and Gree. Um, it was RPG show Takes New York um, and I was the host along with Shalom Black. Let me tell you guys something. She is the cutest, sweetest little thing. Shalom Black is like so cute. She's shorter than me and she's just so sweet and bubbly. I was so amazed with her attitude. You know, you know, like I did meet some other YouTubers there, like Jazzy Too Classy, Jayla. Um, I can't remember the last part of hers, but Jayla, um, um, Fab for Less. Um, oh my god. Oh um, my girl Some More Love came. Um, oh, there were some others and as well, um, and the ones that I mentioned, and there are some others that I didn't mention, I just totally forgot. They were really, really amazing, sweet attitudes. I was so happy to meet everybody, even like my subscribers and stuff. We took pictures and stuff like that. Though the girl who was taking like the Snapchat filter pictures or whatever, girl, because she had got a better angle. Like, I hate when, like, I need to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I take my pictures a certain type of way, not like this head on. So I didn't really like how those pictures came out. There was a little printout thing, whatever. It was still a lot of fun. Um, I was so happy to meet RPG Show because I've been working with them since 2010. So I really, really was so excited to meet them. Um, on my old channel is when I first started working with them. Um, but yeah, it was really nice. And then like there was some other um, YouTubers that they had um, basically brought along to be part of the show or the event or whatever let me tell you something some youtubers when they have like high numbers like 400 500,000 or even it doesn't even matter um they just have like the worst attitude like you watch them on youtube and you're like wow she seemed really sweet you know she's young she's really nice she seems nice through the computer you know what i'm saying down to earth whatever whatever she does great makeup, okay, whatever. But then when you meet her in person, you're just like, oh, her attitude is the worst. And I wasn't the only one that, like, sensed that. A lot of my subscribers that were there were coming up to me and saying, like, the same thing. Like, oh, I don't like her. Her attitude is really nasty. You know, it's sad that when you get to, like, a certain number, you feel like you like Jesus, okay? Or, like, you're the owner of Google or some shit. Like, girl, chill the fuck out because it's just YouTube okay so i mean like I, other than that i had a really good time but i just don't like those who feel like they're better than others and then they just rub off like you know what i'm saying they rub you like the worst in the worst way and then you watch them and then when you meet them in person it's like oh she got a really nasty disposition a really nasty attitude and that was like the most turn offish thing that i have ever like felt and not even because I have felt like some other type of turn offish things but this I was just like oh yes I'm definitely going to unsubscribe to her well other than that we had a great time on those drinks you know girl had some drinks there was some food but I did not get to have any which is unfortunate because I was really looking forward to it but I didn't really want to eat prior to me hosting but a girl should have because um yeah there wasn't anything left but um the hotel that we stayed at was really really nice like i said um i got there saturday afternoon it was like two o'clock and um my cousin who i probably have mentioned many times in my videos um we have grown up together um she's actually in my vlog that i have posted up but we grew up in the projects together she lived on the 10th floor i live on the first and um we grew up together she's probably like five years older than me i'm 43 she's probably like 48 or something like that anyway she doesn't have any kids but you know what i'm saying um, we, we haven't seen each other in like five, six years, okay? But we talk to each other on the phone every single day or we text each other every single day. So, basically, um, since we were teenagers, we have like our own language with each other. But, you know, we still have that same language. But I've kind of like outgrown that because I'm a little bit, well, I'm a lot more mature. Um, but 
she was always like a story time teller and story time wasn't even popping back then it wasn't even on youtube but she was like the king the queen and king of story time like you know what i'm saying like i hate liars and she would make up these elaborate stories so anyway but besides all of that um but prior to even seeing her we would talk on the phone you know i was telling her about how i was getting my teeth fixed and i was getting some teeth removed you know and you guys know that my teeth journey i haven't been to the dentist in a few months but i do need to go back really soon because i do have some that have to be removed and um you know she was aware of that she was saying that you know she was getting her teeth fixed as well because you know her teeth were really weak and they were breaking off etc etc i was like okay and she was getting implants now first of all honey you don't have any insurance like that but you're getting implants you don't even have a job like that but okay whatever so I'm just like believing her because why would you get your teeth pulled up? So she said she was getting a little by little done. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So she said she didn't have like her front teeth and like her, like some of her front teeth, you know, right there. So I was like, okay. She said she don't really smile much. And I was like, okay, all right, that's fine. But do you want to come with me? So I invited her to the bed. She came to Manhattan and she stayed with me in my room and stuff like that. So anyway, um, when I had um, met her at the hotel, now mind you, I hadn't seen her in five years. Now, I don't go by appearances. I don't really care if you're like ass ugly or whatever. That's not my thing. But please don't lie to me because I hate fucking liars. So she told me she was getting her teeth fixed. When she ran up to me, she looked like she had gotten into the worst altercation, physical fight in all time. Okay, seriously? Like, she didn't have no black eyes, no bruises. But her fucking mouth on um, this side was hanging. Like, hanging. And she was really withdrawn, like, really, really thin and skinny. Like, you know, sickly skinny. Like, you know, when people lose weight and they get really thin, but it looks healthy and they look healthy. This was total opposite. You know how, like, when you're a drug addict or whatever and you lose weight like that and you look like you're a drug addict? This is how entire look. This is how she looked, okay? And then she had, like, this really bad wig on and it was just like a mess. I was like... And I was trying not to look at her mouth, but I was like... So when we got upstairs in the hotel, I was like, well, what happened to your mouth? What happened to your teeth? She tried to tell me that she was getting it fixed. Girl, please, you're a lie because your jaw was broken. I could tell her jaw was broken and not repaired, not fixed. And um, what's so crazy about it is I just tried to ignore it, okay? I was like, well, maybe I'm bugging out because I've never been around anybody whose jaw has been broken and not fixed. But it looks to me as if her jaw was broken and not fixed. So anyway, we go across the street to Subway. And there's like a group of four or five people in front of us. They're, they're together. And there's one guy making the sandwiches and another guy who's like helping out. Now, we're behind these people. I don't know. I don't really like to be embarrassed. I don't like nobody making no fucking scene or none of that bullshit. And I feel like this. If you look like ass ugly, bitch, don't make yourself that noticeable. Just like be humble and just be quiet. And either way, there's always somebody for somebody. And who might to say that she was ass ugly, but her attitude made it worse. Anyway, so we in the line. And the people are trying to figure out what they want. Then she just busts out in the line loud as fuck. Okay, loud enough that they could hear her because the place was but so big and there weren't so many people in there. Oh my God. They need to hurry up. Like, you don't know what you want on a sandwich. You acting like you're not to make sandwiches and all of this head movement and stuff. I was just standing there like. And then I was saying to myself, this bitch is really loud and she's fucking embarrassing me. Like, seriously, I ignored it. You know what I'm saying? And she kept on. And then she tried to get me kind of like to join in on it, basically to agree with her. I was not about to agree with her because I don't even agree with the fuck shit you just did. But, you know, I'm going to ignore it. Maybe that was just an outburst that you have and you're going to be OK. Well, mind you, we went from there and we took a cab to my mother's house. We went back to Queens. Me and my mom are sitting there talking. OK. And my mom and um, me are just having a conversation. And then she decides to leave out and go outside and go get something from somebody in the project. So my sister comes in. And me and my mom is in the back room now talking. We're talking about her face. My sister was like, she got her jaw broke. I just seen her outside. She got her jaw broke. My mom said the same thing. Anyway, I was like, okay, I just need to confirm that. My mom was like, yeah, her jaw was broke. And my sister was like, yeah, her jaw was broke. And I was like, her jaw was broke and it didn't get fixed. And it was like, yeah. And I was like, well, because she's telling me because of her teeth. No. So anyway, she comes back and we're all sitting in the living room. Now, mind you, my mom is just sitting there listening to me and my sister's conversation. My sister's sitting across from me 
and my mom is right here in another chair and my cousin she's sitting right next to me me and my sister is talking about the walking dead because we can't wait for sunday we like huge fans etc etc we talking about this we talking about other shows did this bitch my cousin just sit out blurtly just with no, no regards like be respectful oh so where'd you get the dog from like bitch excuse you so we ignore her because they excuse me or just wait until we fucking finish and she repeated herself Point blank Perry, she was rude. I hate when people just bust in a conversation, over talk you and do shit like that. I ignored it again. So the next day was Sunday. Um, she was rude to somebody in the elevator. And I had to tell her, listen, don't be rude at my bed, okay? Don't act out in my bed. I fixed her up as best as I could. Gave her a different wig, fixed her up as best as I could. Now, mind you, the event was amazing. We had a really great time. She, she, didn't, she didn't show out. She didn't act up, thank God, because I really don't like to embarrass nobody. So, and I don't want to be embarrassed. That Monday, I checked out, okay? And um, I got in a, a Uber to go to LaGuardia Airport to get my rental because I was going upstate New York to visit my family. You know, like my husband, my sons, my grandson. You know what I'm saying? I was about to go, and my daughter-in-law was going upstate to visit them. And she was coming along with me, so she was like, she was going to drive out of the city. So cool, I'm going to let her drive out of the city because I really don't really like fucking with people in New York City with their driving. You know what I'm saying? When I was living in New York City, I didn't have a car, and then I moved upstate. So when I would go upstate, you know what I mean, that would be the only time that I would come through, and then I would just put my car in, in like, a parking lot, like, in paper parking. I had to eat you some fall, so you're just so freaking good from a dollar tree. So, we in the cab, and... She busted out talking about, you just a little bit too friendly. I'm like, excuse me, what? And I'm on my phone, like, answering emails and shit. And I was like, what? Because you and that girl from YouTube, y'all was sitting at the breakfast table today, and y'all was in the room last night, all talking about your business and stuff, and y'all was asking each other questions. Now, mind you, she's talking about Jayla. Jayla, mad cool. This girl, mad fucking cool, okay? She's talking about her life. I'm talking about my life, and we don't really have to talk about it too much to each other because we put it on YouTube, so it ain't nothing. So I'm like, what are you talking about? She was like, y'all don't even know each other. I was like, yeah, we do know each other. We know each other from YouTube, and we, we are talking to one another. She was like, oh, well, and, and here go the head movement. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a little bit standoffish, but if people were to ask me questions, I'd be like, Ugh, what the fuck is you asking me for? She was like, you think I'm standoffish? And I was like, you know what? I'm glad that you said that. Because I think you got a nasty attitude and you rude. And she was like, what do you mean? Explain. Give me an example. And then the first example I gave her was the subway. She was like, well, it was taking long. I said, it doesn't matter. You don't go around being rude and nasty to people and being blatantly out loud obnoxious. That's not what you do to people because you wouldn't like it done to you. I said, listen, I understand how you feel. Maybe you're going through some things, you know what I'm saying, and you're not feeling real good about yourself, so that may make you feel some type of way, but life is short. We don't go around being rude and shit and miserable to people. As long as you keep going around being mean and nasty to people, your lifespan is going to be cut real short because you're just going to be miserable and then you're going to die of being miserable. You know, see, I'm not saying you got to go around and kiss people's asses, but you don't got to go around and be rude and nasty to people for no apparent reason. And she was like, well, maybe because you moved to Arizona. I said, my attitude has never been rude and nasty to people. I don't go around and be mean to people. If you be mean to me, I'm going to fucking be mean back to you. If you be mean or rude to me, I'm going to be rude back to you. But I'm not going to find it in my, just to go around being rude and mean and nasty to people for no fucking reason. Like, who the fuck does shit like that? You know what I'm saying? So she basically was like, well, maybe I need to work on my attitude. Work. I said, you know what, Kenya? You do. I really think that you do need to work on it. I said, because just because you feel like, you know what I'm saying, she tried to blame it on her getting shot. You got shot like 15, 20 years ago, bitch. Why'd you bring that shit up? I said, those people that did that to you have nothing to do with the people out in the world today. Okay? I said, maybe you should work on yourself. I said, but then again... You're never going to be happy until you're happy within yourself. I understand you're going through some things with your teeth right now and with, like, certain issues in life in general. So that may make you miserable and it may upset you. So until you get right and you're happy within yourself, your attitude will then change. You know what I'm saying? 
But until then, you know what I'm saying, I do feel like you should at least try to work on it. But I feel like once you feel better about yourself, maybe your appearance or whatever, then you'll be a little bit more happier and you won't go around being rude to people and have this nasty disposition. So she was like, all right, I'm going to work on it. She was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so I let it go. So, you know what I'm saying, I was just like basically giving a real talk in my motherfucking ride. Um, but you know what I'm saying, I had gotten tired of it at that point and I really didn't want to spaz off. So anyway, we get up to state New York and make a long story short, I see my husband, I see my sons and my daughter-in-law and my grandson. So now at this moment, I'm taking my oldest son, my eldest son to probation. He got a car, he was like, well you could drive. So it's me and my husband in the front seat and then my son and my cousin in the back seat. My son, Jerron, who had to go to probation. So when we pull up, I was like, well, you want me to come inside? And he was like, I was like, you want me to come inside with you? He was like, no, ma, you just stay right here and be right out. I was like, well, you sure? Because I'll come inside with you. He was like, no, nah, ma, you good. Did this bitch just bless and blatantly talk about in the back, talk about, you act like he going to the park and you could go. I turned the fuck around and I went in on her. I can't remember word for word. But I know I was like, you know what? I'm so fucking tired of your attitude. You keep running your motherfucking mouth, trying to play somebody and be embarrassing up here. Always fucking got something to say to somebody. Man, I went so in on this bitch, like so in. My husband's in there talking about love. Calm down. I was like, nah, fuck this bitch. I already told her earlier today in the cab to watch her fucking mouth and to learn how to keep clean of her attitude and fix her attitude and work on her fucking attitude because she's rude and nasty and means people. And now you're going to sit up here and try to tell me how the fuck to raise my son and where the fuck I can go with my kid? You ain't even got no kids, nor can you have none. And you still running your motherfucking mouth up in here. I know I went the fuck off. And she got out the car and started smoking her nasty ass cigarette and tearing up. Now, that was the last motherfucking time I had to say anything to her. Okay? I mean, like, she made my trip so undesirable. Like, that portion of my trip, like... I'm, I'm hanging out with my family. You know, I took everybody to Applebee's for dinner. Of course, she was there. But she knew, like, you know what I'm saying? I had to have a talk with her again after spazzing out on her. You know what I'm saying? I said, you know, basically, I had to tell her, like, look, I ain't trying to embarrass you or be mean to you. But, you know what I'm saying? You always got something to say. And you're not about to sit up here and play me and disrespect me in front of my husband or my kids. Like, you're not about to do that, okay? So, whatever. We went out to dinner. And then... She left with my sons, and they went back to his house, and then I went to the hotel with my husband, and that was it. And then the next day, um, we drove back to New York City. I dropped her off, um, and I went my way to my mom's house, and she went back to her boyfriend. Misery love company, and I'm not the company for your miserable ass, okay? I just think, like, don't go around being rude and nasty to people. Who the fuck does that shit, like? You just tried to turn my shit into, like, some other shit. And then, like, when I see shit, like, it's like, are you competing with me? Like, she tried to play me talking about she got two Mercedes Benz, but you don't even look like you have a fucking Huffy bicycle. Okay? You've been told me years ago when I first moved here that you bought a house in Pennsylvania, a three-story house, cash. But you live in the Bronx. I've heard so many different lies from her in my childhood that is just ridiculous. So anyway, she's telling me about these Mercedes Benz and she's like, oh, she asked me, do I have rims, do I have rims on my, my truck? And I was like, yeah, I have rims. And um, she was like, oh, because I have some too, but I'm not even that flashy. Every time I drive down the street, people be like, oh my God, look at her rims. Oh my God, look at them wheels. Like, I don't really understand. And I was like, oh, okay, like, whatever. And um, she said it was a car. And then she was like, um, they be just wilding out over my 22-inch rims. And I was like, oh, for bro? I was like, oh, okay. And then she was like, um, well, why do you got them on your car? I said, because it has a custom grill and custom handles and shit like that. So they match. And she was like, oh, okay. And she was like, well, what does your truck look like? So I showed her a picture. And she was like, oh, those are nice. Those are nice rims. You know what I'm saying? They, um... They're real nice. What size are those? I was like, those are 22s. Oh, she was like, oh. I was like, don't you have 22s in your car? And she was like, oh, maybe there's something different. So she tried to play me and lie. Like, girl, stop. Okay? Why are you always trying to compete with me? Like, you think I'm fucking stupid. She just made my trip like, Ugh. I just really wish I had not invited her. 
You know what I'm saying? I really, really wish I would have not had invited her. This is the shit I be talking about the people, about people. Sometimes family is not the ones that you want to hang around with all the time. They be lying. I just really don't like liars. Like, for real, a liar is one thing that I really cannot stand. I mean, like, we all lie. We always need, some of us need to lie to get out of some fucking crimes or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? A little white lie, maybe a little black lie. I don't know the colors, whatever. But we all have told a lie in our, in our lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, I mean, I, I have lied to my mom as a teenager and shit because I didn't want to get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, you know what I'm saying, what we do as kids and teenagers, but when you are an adult, like 48, 49 years old, and you're making up stories, like story time lies, then you have a fucking issue, okay? And, like, I'm not caught up in reality TV shows, like, she's going in on me, I'm like, why I don't watch Love and Hip Hop and telling me all about Cardi B's life and all of this shit, like, bitch, but she says she's not hooked up, girl, listen, I don't really give a shit about all of that shit about entertainers and celebrities because they're not paying my fucking bills. It's just like, grow the fuck up, okay, bitch? Grow the fuck up. I couldn't take it. I was so glad when I got the fuck away from her. And I was so mad that I had even invited her. Like, seriously, I had wished that I had not invited her at all. And the next time I go upstate New York, she's like, well, maybe let her, let her know because she will drive up there in her Mercedes and meet me. Girl, bye. I wouldn't fucking call you if I was around the goddamn corner from your house. So on that note, yes, my freaking trip was amazing, um, except for the part where I had the company of a relative that wasn't that great, okay? So now, you know, you have to be very aware of the company that you keep. I know she got her, bro her jaw broke, though. Just stop fucking lying. Probably running off at the fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk issue that you would like me to address, you can always send an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and put in the subject line, real talk. Um, as well as that, if you want to change the names of the people that are in your email, like, you know what I'm saying? Her name is really April, but you don't want nobody to know. You can just let me know, hey, I changed the names already. If you don't say, hey, I changed the names already, I'm just going to assume that you have, and I'm just going to read it as is, or I just may make up my own. Um, and, yeah, these real talks are, this is my advice and my opinions. Nobody's telling you to go ahead and do it. This is just how I feel. Some things that um, I say in this are just my relations to what may have happened in my own life, you know what I'm saying? And so that I can totally relate to what you guys are going through. And it may not be the same exact 100% predicament, but I can use like an issue that I've already had, you know what I'm saying? Or just because I went through enough, I can just say how I feel, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying you could take it Take it for what it is, okay? If I tell you to jump out the window, don't really let fucking jump out the window. If I say kick his ass, I don't really mean, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to kick his ass, but just take it for what it is. It's just my opinions, and I'm just trying to give you the best non-filtered opinion there is. So on that note, let's get into this real talk, you guys. Okay, so this one right here is kind of strange to me because, you know, I don't believe in all of this mumbo jumbo shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, some things I might believe in, but I don't really believe in that mumbo jumbo shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Reading somebody's palms and shit like that or tarot card readings. I don't believe in that shit. And I feel like those people who do shit like that are kind of like into some evil shit, you know what I'm saying? Or they just trying to scam you for your money. But you know what I'm saying? To each his own. Everybody have their own beliefs, you know what I'm saying? Everybody have their own beliefs. So I'm just going to read the email for what it is worth because she did take the time out to email it to me. But I'm going to just let you guys know, I don't believe in, I don't believe in this shit. Like, I just really don't feel like anybody can sit there and look at the lines in your hand and read that. You know what I'm saying? Or pick up a fucking card and read that shit, like... You asking me all these fucking questions in the beginning, like you interviewing me, and then you you making your own answers. So I, this shit, I just don't fuck with. I just don't fuck with a lot of things in life, like tarot card readings, reading my motherfucking palm, telling me my goddamn future, Ouija boards. I don't fuck with none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a simple person. I don't really need you to tell me my future because I would rather find that shit out on my own. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want you to read no cards to me because if I'm going to have some bad shit happen, I would rather just let that shit happen um, and not be all paranoid about the shit. So certain shit like that is not good. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? Like I said, to each his own. Um, and I'm going to read it now. 
Dear Miss April, thank you for being you and doing what you do. Thank you for the variety of beauty, shopping, real talk, and keeping up with the fam. I like real talk and the family vlogs the most, especially the decorating show. Unbelievable what you did to those curtains. I hope you feel better about your son's transition to New York. Can you keep us posted on that? Well, he's coming home in November, so. Mm -hmm. And I did, I, I, get, I did see him when I was there. April, I am a fortune teller on YouTube, and it looks very easy. But as you know, recording, editing, and uploading can take hours, sometimes days. One day, I spotted this fortune teller who charged $4.99 for content on YouTube, meaning you couldn't watch the video for free. You had to pay $4.99 to watch a video. You can put any price on it that you want. I was shocked and jealous. I was shocked because no other reader charged for their content, and I was jealous of her courage and nerve. She placed a monetary value on her craft on a relatively free platform. There was a terrible uproar. She lost some subscribers but made money. I don't know if I had that kind of backbone, April. I created four paid content videos alongside of 100 free videos. I charged $4.99 for the 30-minute readings. April, I have made a humble $100, and I am very proud of my work. However, I lost close to 50 subscribers, and I just couldn't handle it, so I stopped. I can't stand losing the subscribers. In addition, I am heartbroken right now. When I relocated across the country during the holidays without family or friends, I was very lonely and sought refuge in the wrong arms. I am still reeling from the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey and the filming and editing takes my mind off of the pain and loneliness. Right now, my car is broke down and I have isolated and I live isolated in the country in a new city. And it was making me so happy to create content and see three to four YouTube webinars three to four YouTubers buy it. The video content gives me something to do and editing is literally the only thing besides weed that gives my mind and heart relief. April, I went to school for broadcasting and lived in LA to pursue film. It didn't work out, but I have always loved film, editing and broadcasting content. I was finally becoming happy again. I was in my own world, working hard, using a skill to provide a service and product, and now all those people who said they love me so much are leaving because I have packaged a skill to provide a product. It breaks my heart. I feel devastated. How should I handle it? Should I create a video explaining why I am charging for some videos? I offer 97 videos for free and maybe four for sale. What is their fucking problem? My mom said, well, the ones who left weren't going to purchase your services or products anyway. Nevertheless, it still feels like shit when people walk away in droves. I can fake it and turn on a tough exterior, but it's quite alarming to see people unsubscribing simply because I offer a product for sale alongside of many, many free videos. April, I feel like recording and editing are keeping me sane right now. I just really, truly, deeply don't know how to handle the subs that get mad and leave. Sign, losing subs. Okay, so first of all, sign, losing subs. We're we going to call you something else. We're just going to call you, um, hmm. I don't know what the fuck we're going to call her. We just gonna call her honey. Hmm. Now, honey is already bitching to me in this email about some other tarot card reader that um is on YouTube and she didn't charge for her videos and she's getting mad and up raw and she, the, the so if you mad and you you end up you you get mad and you jealous because this person is charging but then again you you see how she lost people then why the fuck would you do it like you know what I'm saying like she's sitting here complaining to me about all oh, this other tarot card reader on YouTube she started um charging people 4.99 to watch her content and all of this shit and blah 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 and she done lost subscribers behind it and you know, Honey is like getting mad and upset about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Basically, she's in an uproar. She's up she's upset because the young lady is basically um charging people, but she's jealous because the young lady is making some money. But she's also upset probably because 
the girls losing subscribers. What I'm not understanding is, so if you upset and mad about the shit, why would you go and do the same fucking thing? Like, why would you charge $4.99 for your videos and then get mad because people is fucking leaving and unsubscribing to you? You already seen that happen with the other tarot readers, so why the fuck would you follow in her footsteps and do some dumb shit? Like, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, because plainly, simply, and blunt, that's what the fuck you just did. You followed in her motherfucking footsteps and the same dumb shit happened to your ass. So there's really no need to bitch to me about it. There's really no need to feel jealous. You did the same fucking thing. Here's my thing. You cannot always be a follower. Be a motherfucking leader, okay? Do your own shit, okay? Now, I don't. this is this is the thing that I don't try to figure out. How the fuck is you reading anybody's tarot cards through YouTube? Like, okay? That's what I'm not understanding. But you know what? To each his own, there's always a way to get around some shit and scam some motherfucking body. I don't know about no fucking fortune tellers. I don't believe in none of that shit. So, you know what I'm saying? I did want to read it because she took the time to write the shit. But the whole fact is you getting mad because this bitch over here is another tarot card reader. And she getting some money out of it. She losing some subscribers out of it. But you complaining about the shit. But you going to follow in her footsteps? That's like saying, well, this bitch jumped off the roof and she got um she broke her legs. But everybody love her now. Oh, I can't stand that shit. How she gonna do that? But then you gonna jump off the route too and you gonna break your legs and some people love you but not as much as her. Like, bitch, what the fuck? What is the main purpose of this email? Why did you even bother to email me this? What is the point? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I don't know about all of this. I don't know if you want me to help you get subscribers because I'm not about to do that. I'm not about to do that because I don't believe in no fortune tellers, tarot card readers, or none of that bullshit. I think it's all devilish bullshit, and it's all fake and bullshit like that. That's just like my brother, the one that I have told you guys about many a times, the one who's gay. Um, if I'm 43, he's probably like 38. Okay, so he's gay. Who cares about him being gay? Because I love him just the same, but he feels like he's a psychic, okay? And he was possessed. And like, we don't speak to each other on a simple fact is I don't like the way you disrespect our father. So I had to tell him, look, you're going to either choose one of the three because you were gay and you were psychic and you was possessed. It's hard being gay and it's fucking hard being a psychic and it's damn hard being possessed. So you need to choose one of the three and take that medication that you've been taking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he whacked. He whacked the fuck off. He's a nut job. A, a fucking, he is like, Scotty got his ass beamed the fuck up so far up into space. He don't know when the fuck his rocket ship is coming the fuck down. But like I said, he a whack job and he think he was possessed and he think he's a psychic. Same thing with this young lady. She a fucking fortune teller. I'm not really sure if she's gay and I damn sure don't know she was possessed. But like I said, these people that come up to you, like I've had people do that to me. They've come up to me and they've said things to me and you know, friendly conversation. You say hi just to be, you know, hi, how you doing? And then the next thing they know, because this has happened to me in Ross, um, I like to read your palms. I was like, excuse me? I like to read your palms. I read cards. I was like, I'm good. I, well, I have a special going on. I'm good because I don't believe in none of that shit. It's the devil, okay? Get away from me. That's how I had to come back at you because, like, you know what? Don't fucking touch me because I don't know what the fuck devilish shit is on your skin or what the fuck you into. And, bitch, don't even talk to me. Better yet, stay far the fuck away from me because I don't like those type of people to be around me like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't really know if that shit is for real or not. They could be putting some kind of spells on you. Your hair could be falling the fuck out. Your teeth could be falling the fuck out. And I got those two issues already. I don't need to be fucking sitting around here, walking around here, looking like my motherfucking cousin, okay? Or some real shit. Like, so, with these tarot card readers and all of this, like, I can tell your future and shit. Like, okay, listen. I'm pretty sure that there are people in the world. I said I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% positive. But I'm sure there are some people in this world who are gifted, okay? There are gifted people, okay? Gifted, mentally gifted, that could read minds. I don't fucking know. I ain't met none yet, but I'm pretty sure there may be some. You know what I'm saying? It's a humongous world. There's fucking planets all over the place. You don't know what the fuck is possible. But I don't really believe that there's a whole bunch of tarot card readers or motherfucking YouTube, okay? Girl, bye. All right? But on top of that, like, it doesn't say even about being a tarot card reader. This is about you fucking hating and getting mad and then complaining about the shit. Like, you can't get mad because the next bitch is getting her money. Like, come on, let's be for real about that shit. You cannot be mad that the next bitch is getting her fucking guap. And then you want to follow in her footsteps and then you lose subscribers and shit too. Let me tell you something. 
subscribers gonna come and go regardless they ain't got to click on your paid fucking content they could watch your other shit maybe they feel figured that you know what this is not in my interest i don't really like tar tarot card readers or fortune tellers or fucking psychics i don't even know why i subscribe to this channel let me unsubscribe to it you know what i'm saying maybe you have some shit that was interesting to them at one point in time and then they started realizing like you know what this shit is not for me you know what i'm saying and people unsubscribe for all different types of reasons oh this bitch channel is boring oh i'm tired of her wigs i'm tired of her makeup i'm tired of whatever whatever the fuck it is they could be tired of the shit but i know this i don't know how it's possible to fucking talk shit about somebody and get mad and jealous and hate on them and then do the same fucking thing that they done did like you're being a hypocrite okay that is the pot calling the kettle fucking black okay Bitch, get it together, honey, and stop hating on everybody else and do your own fucking thing. If you want to fucking charge to do tarot card readings, then bitch, have them come to your motherfucking house and charge. I would think that that was the best thing possible if you really have a talent. Now, you know what I'm saying? I don't really want to talk too much shit about this bitch because she might fucking put a spell on me. I don't fucking know. It is what it is. But listen, on some real shit, everybody has their own beliefs, okay? And if that's what you believe in, I'm not knocking you. You know what I'm saying? You could believe that Santa Claus is at the North Pole or South Pole, whatever fucking pole he's at. You know what I'm saying? He could be swinging on that motherfucking pole for all I care. Okay, but you could believe that there's um, Loch Ness Monsters or Bigfoot or, you know what I'm saying? You could believe in all of that shit. You could believe in whatever the fuck you believe in, okay? Because we are all entitled to our beliefs. But my key to this whole fucking real talk was... Don't sit here and talk about what somebody else is doing and complain about it and say you're jealous about it. And then, you know, and you, then you do, do the same thing. What did you expect? If this is what happened to her, what the fuck did you expect was going to happen to you? Did you think that you was just going to have like the best outcome? No, it doesn't work like that. It is what it is. My thing is this, get your hustle on, and if you want to make some money, I would suggest that maybe you would take on another avenue like, invite people well i'm not saying invite people into your home but maybe list it on like craigslist i don't think you could list that stuff on um offer up i'm not really sure but i would list it like on craigslist and if you could off list it on offer up i would list it on that as well also you can also like put in your description like if people live in your town or whatever that they can email you if they want to have a private reading and the price etc etc that's how you make money you know what i'm saying you can have your own little website and stuff like that but you know what i'm saying youtube is very saturated so i don't really think that you know so you're going to make a lot of money off of tarot card reading but then again i don't even know but i don't even know how that's possible to do like tarot card reading on through youtube but you know what i'm saying everybody has their own craft everybody has their own hustle but my thing is this don't hate on the next bitch okay so she made money and then you what was so crazy about it you can charge any price for videos on youtube i've seen them for 99 cents but you chose to choose the same fucking price as hers so to me that was like you was trying to be like her and it didn't work out for you the same way it didn't work out for her so honey i would just take my advice and move on okay so we're gonna read the next one real quick all right okay you guys so let's do this next one so she puts um family struggles warning this is long no names will be mentioned but you can call me cat a little backstory um i'm 25 going on 26 bbw queen come from a mixed household, white mother, black father, and they're divorced, and have one older full blood sister. She's a mama's girl, and I'm a daddy's girl. My mother, father, and sister have all made a career in the military. Okay, so this is the deal. Like I stated, I am 25, born on 26. And for all of my life, I have been dealing with the fact that I have never really been accepted by my family. It started young with my grandmother, my mom's, my mother's mom, who made no secret that my sister was her favorite. When I was four, she had we had to go live with her due to both of my parents having to go overseas. I endured a small amount of physical abuse and a whole hell of a lot of mental abuse. Once back with my parents, everything was good, so I thought. Coming up, I have always been the bigger, outspoken child. I have always done my own thing and have never apologized for it. With that being said, once my parents got divorced due to my mother's job, we had to move to a predominantly white neighborhood. Now, because I am white, it wasn't a complete shock, but I have always related more to my black side. So in ways, it was an adjustment, especially being from the South and moving to the West. However, I managed. So throughout the years, I have always noticed that my mother always seemed to have something to say or talk about or how I talked. Oh, hold on. My mother always seemed to have something to say about how I talk, how I look, my friends, and just me as a person, but never had anything to say about my sister. My sister considers my mom her best friend, but me, no ma'am, my parents are my parents, and that's that. 
laugh out loud. So after the constant expression of dislike, I started to change myself. I started to become more of what made her happy so I didn't have to keep hearing her mouth. I became as skinny as I could get and I tried to talk properly. But no matter how much I tried to change, a little bit of my old self would come out. But even with changing who I was, I was still talked about. So after years of being under my mother, once I graduated, I ran fast, fast from her, five days after graduating high school to be exact, and moved back to the South with my father. It took me many years, but I have finally gotten to who I am and what makes me happy. But now I am talked about worse. My parents and sister call me ghetto, ratchet, hood, and one time during a heated conversation, my mother actually came out of her mouth and called me a hood rat. Wow. But April, I don't understand why me being myself has to be considered hood or ghetto. Yes, I talk with slang. Yes, I love rap music, long nails, colorful hair, tattoos, and all. But so what? With all that I have graduated college with honors, I went back to school and got my... That shit... Oh, I can never say this. Basically, it's like a makeup, skin license. I can never say. I always get tongue-tied. That's... That, you guys know what I'm saying, okay? And nail license. May have my, have my own place, no kids, not that it's a bad thing. Never been on drugs, in jail, never got fired from a job, and have worked in a corporate America for a long time. But do have my problems and struggles with life. I'm truly happy with who I am. The issues is that I'm getting older and I'm looking to settle down and start a family. And that I want my family to be a part of it. But I would never want to bring a man around them because of their judgmental ways. And I would hate to have kids and they get talked about as well. I'm honestly on my last straw with the disrespect and some days wish I didn't have a family, but this is my family, April, and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> Excuse me. But I want to be happy with myself and my family. Any advice on how I can continue to be myself but start to become closer to my family? You have truly become an inspiration and I love your family dynamic. Lots of love, cat. cat. And she's so cute with her colorful hair <laughs> and stuff. Like, you know something, cat? So basically, she is about to be 26. She is, you know, she's mulatto. She has a white mother and a black father who are divorced. And she has a sister. She's more um, closer to her father. And her sister is more closer to her mother. So basically, her mother is always complaining about how she talks, how she dresses, who her friends are. Um, you know, basically, she just complains about who Kat is in the person. So Kat wants to, you know, basically went and changed herself to be more of what her mother likes and loves so that way the family members can talk about her let me tell you something sweetheart you never change who the fuck you are for nobody okay you are who the fuck you are and if you was to change yourself just to please somebody else then that's what we would call being fake and phony bitch okay let me tell you this much i ain't the perfect person in the world my mother loved me for who i am she know i am i'm very opinionated I have no fucking filter. I will tell you off in a second if you cut, if you, if you do the wrong thing to me. And then I do have that side of me that's very loving and just very caring and just, you know, friendly. You know what I'm saying? I am who I am. And then there's my sister who is a little bit, she's not the same as me. She's not outspoken like me. She's smaller than me. She's not opinionated like me. We're just total opposite, but she loves us for who we are. You know what I'm saying? Had she never, 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 never once said that I'm. I was ghetto and ratchet. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? She just more or less says, you know what? You're the very, you're, you're very blunt and you're very outspoken and you're just more of a bitch than Stephanie is, my sister. But, I can, and I have a potty mouth. But, my mom can relate to that. It's because I get it from her. You know what I'm saying? But, I've never changed myself for who I am. I am who the fuck I am. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that goes to say, like, with people on YouTube. They get on here and they try to be something that they're not. You know what I'm saying? So people could like them. And then when it boils down to it and you see these same YouTubers out in public, they're not that person that you've watched on on a screen. They're totally different. You know what I'm saying? They might be a little bit goofier or they might be a whole lot more bitchier. Either way, they're not the same person. And then you get judged for that. Let me tell you, life is short and... Why make yourself unhappy to make somebody else happy? Like, I'm never going to do that. If nobody don't like me for who the fuck I am, then guess what, bitch? I guess you don't motherfucking like me. You can carry the fuck on and I could care the fuck less. On some real shit, I could care the fuck less. I'm just saying. But on another serious side note, like, yeah, you want to get married and you want to have a family one day and you just feel like, hey, I don't want these people to be judging my children 
or my husband, the way that they judge me or talk about me. Honey, people going to talk about you regardless. They're going to talk about you if you're doing good. They're going to talk about you if you're doing bad. They're going to talk about you regardless. It may suck sometimes that your own family members may talk about you, just like I done just talked about my cousin. But, you know, it is what it is. I said it to her face, and I say it to her face the fuck again. But regardless of what, you cannot please every fucking body, whether it's your mother, your brother, your sister, your father, your grandmother. You cannot please everybody. But what you should please, the first person you should please is yourself. Because if you don't, then you're going to be one fucking miserable person. And you're going to go around and have this nasty chip on your shoulder and just be mean and nasty and rude to everybody. And that's not cool neither. And then people are really going to talk about you and nobody's going to fucking like you. You know what I'm saying? So continue to wear your curly, colorful hair or whatever kind of hair you like and dress how you want it to dress and listen to the what the fuck you want to listen to and talk how you want to talk like you know what I'm saying a lot of people like when I was growing up I lived in the projects all my life you know what I'm saying this is where I was born and raised in the projects and a lot of times people mistake me for not being black you know what I'm saying a Puerto Rican or whatever and I'm not really sure if everybody knows my background but my father's father is Italian 100% and my mom's father is black so my dad is mixed and my mom is 100% black so you know, I guess you would say, yes, April is mixed. She's, I'm mixed too as well. However, um, I don't really like when people don't think that I'm black because it kind of irritates me. But, you know, then there are some people who be like, you don't like rap music? How could you not like rap music? You're black. How could you not speak slang? I don't really to speak too much slang, okay? The reason why I don't really speak too much slang is because my mother didn't, you know, she didn't allow that in my household. Listen, I couldn't watch Freddy Krueger movies until I was like 15, 16 years old. Because my mother didn't allow that shit neither. Okay? Um, and um, rap music, my mom didn't like rap music. So, I had to listen to what the fuck she listened to. When I got older, I got me a, a Walkman and I had some headphones. And I would listen to like Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play and shit like that. But growing up as a kid, I listened to El Bars, Luther Bandros, you know what I'm saying? I listened to shit like that. And when I would go to my dad's house, I would listen to Prince and like white bands. My dad is black and half and half but he listened to like white people music so i don't really think that people people always kind of stereotype shit like oh only black people should listen to this music and only black people should dress like this and only black people should talk like this like no people there's no way like talking it's the way you speak is not a it's not a color like you know what i'm saying like my, my son was always says that like he like he went back to new york and people in new york always like to him like he says oh you talk like a white person oh you don't even sound like you black and he's like talking and speaking is not a color you know what I'm saying? And he's never really, was was never really spoken slang. And that's because I don't, I don't allow that shit in my house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to understand what the fuck you're saying to me. Okay? If you speak in slang, do that shit outside of my home. But in my household, I don't allow slang. And I didn't bring my kids up like that. So, they don't speak slang. Okay? Um, and then when they do know some slang, I'm just like, okay, what does that mean? Can you, can you fill me in on that? Because I really like to know what that fucking means. You know what I'm saying? So, there, the way you talk is not a color. It's just the way you fucking talk. And it's the environment that you're in and how the people that you're around. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so people think because I was born and raised in New York City, um, they always come up to me. They're like, oh, you're so nice. And you were born and raised in New York City? Oh, you're so nice. You don't even seem like it. But we can tell you are from your accent, but you don't seem like it. So because I was born and raised in New York City, I'm supposed to be mean and rude to people. No, it doesn't work like that. Or because I was born and raised in the projects, I'm supposed to be ghetto as fuck and be ratchet. No, it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a ratchet person. I'm not fucking ghetto. And just because I was born in the projects does not mean that, like, don't fucking pinpoint and stereotype me. And so that's what your parent or your mother is doing. Like, she feels like because you like certain things that you're ghetto and ratchet. Maybe she's boring and fucking lame and bland. Who you would she wouldn't like if you was to say that to her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, if I'm ghetto and ratchet, you're boring and fucking lame and, and bland and you don't got no style like you know what I'm saying so she wouldn't like that like it's a way of life it is what you like you know what I'm saying it is what you like but what I need you to understand is you don't change yourself for no fucking body and if you get married and you have a family bring them around your family you don't have to keep them away your, your family your own little personal family is going to realize on their own what type of human beings they're around so you don't have to forewarn them <laughs> or maybe you may need to forewarn them, but they'll see it for themselves. But the number one thing is you don't change for no fucking body. If they can't accept you for who the fuck you are, then you know what? That's their problem and that's their fucking loss. Me personally, like, I get this all the time for people. You 
like you know what april you so authentic you you never changed since you 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 know what i'm saying you was on to youtube you stayed the same person or people that may be in the street oh my god you were just like the person on the tv screen or whatever the computer she's really the same person this me you know what i'm saying when i see you on the street and as long as you don't jump out and scare me then i'm cool with you but you know what i'm saying like when i see people at the hey I'm, i talk to people and we laugh and we chat it up you know what i'm saying and I, females at the meet and greet i'll be like what's up bitch like, you know what i'm saying like i talk to you like you my friends because you my fucking friends i don't walk around my nose up in the air and think i'm better than nobody you know what i'm saying i am who the fuck i am you see me right here like this this how i am all fucking day long i got a motherfucking potty mouth um i'm goofy and funny as fuck so i hear i don't really try to be funny but that's just my personality um and i just am who the fuck i am i don't really try to impress nobody i don't really try to impress anybody i don't try to make um myself be fake and i damn sure don't try to make myself other than what the fuck i am you know what i'm saying um and if you don't fucking like me then bitch bye i could care fucking less because if you don't like me somebody's gonna eventually come along that's going to motherfucking like me okay so I know like you know say I know that's your mom and shit and your sister and your family and shit like that But you know what sometimes family can do you the worst You know what I'm saying the key word is family but sometimes it just should be like non-family You know what I'm saying because your friends sometimes be your family more than your actual blood family You know what I'm saying and it sucks but it is the truth like seriously it is the God's honest truth You know what I mean so listen you can let your mom know. You can have a talk with her and be like, and just tell her, like, listen, I am who I am. And you can either take it for face value and accept it for who I am or just don't take it. But I'm not going to change who I am for you or for anybody else. I love myself and people that are, know me and surround me, they love me as well. And I'm going to continue to be cat and nobody else. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just so fucking miserable in their own life that they always think that changing a person is going to make their world better. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I could care less if you wore two different color shoes, had no motherfucking teeth, wore a green, gray wig, and, and had fucking whatever on. If it makes you fucking happy, then I love it, okay? I'm fucking blit and bliss about the shit. I'm not going to knock anybody for how they feel or who the fuck they are. Just don't fucking disrespect me and don't disrespect mine. And that's it. And don't lie and don't steal. Bottom line. But on some real shit, cat, don't change who the fuck you are. Be you. You know what I'm saying? And when you do have your own family, they're going to see your own family, your family family, for who they are, for face value. Never be afraid to be who the fuck you are. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell you what, I don't like no fake phony bitches ever. And I'm probably sure I'm not the only motherfucking bitch who don't like fake phony bitches. Okay? Don't don't pretend to be something that you're not. That's the hardest shit to fucking do. And I'll give you a prime example. When I started my first YouTube channel back in 2009, I watched all of these females on YouTube. And I was like, oh, they speak like this and they talk like this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to be the same way. I'm going to do it because I'm probably going to get more subscribers. So I tried that out probably for like um, maybe a month or so. Girl, please, I got tired of that shit. It was like, you know what? I'm just about to be me, who the fuck I am. And if they don't like it, well, they make a kick on the motherfucking Xbox on the top because I could care less. And that's what I fucking did. And it made my life so much easier. Being fake and phony and be like, well, hey, guys, you know, this is April and I'm back. We're going to do this video. And it's going to be on this blonde wig that I have on today, which is absolutely amazing. I love the hairline of it, and I love the structure and the silkiness and the tones of it. I also love the way that I applied it to my head, and oh my god, I really, really love this wig. Like, you know, it did shed just a tad bit, but I still, like, I really, really do love it. It's like the best. Instead, a bitch be like, you know what? The wig, all right, you know, they could have did this wrong too, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what's up, divas? We back to do this wig tutorial. This me, this much easier, me being who the fuck I am than sitting up there and putting on a fake phony, a whole fucking mask. Cat, be who the fuck you are and just continue to be who the fuck you are. And that goes for everybody. Bitches, don't be fake and phony for no fucking body. Just be you. And if nobody don't like you for who the fuck you are, then you know what? Then you can tell me kiss ass. So let's move on to the next. Okay, so you know. Come in, come in, come in clear. Okay, so here goes the next one. Hey, love. I recently discovered your channel and I love everything about it. Why, thank you. My name is Z. You can call me Z. I don't really know how to word this. I have this boyfriend. We'll call him M. We're both 19 years old. I met M about five months ago, but we just started dating on the 21st of September. 
He's already saying I love you and he recently told me that he is in love with me. I do have very strong feelings for him. I feel like M is being a mama's boy it makes him I feel like M being a mama's boy makes him how he is when it comes to his feelings. When we met, we clicked right away. It felt like we've known each other for years. We have a lot in common and we get along great. Only problem is he's hell of a jealous. If I do as much as mention an ex, he gets on 10. He be livid as fuck. I love him, but I know that I fall quickly, so I'm trying to take things slowly. As far as being in love, I don't really know what to say about that. He's already talking about living together and all that. We're still young. We're grown, but we aren't grown. He's talking about getting married in six years and starting a family. My mother recently passed away, and I just lost someone else very close to me. The last thing I need right now is for someone to be playing with my heart. What do you think about him? Do you think he's being real? Is he moving too fast? So first of all, um, my girl Z is 19. Her boyfriend um, is 19 also. His name is M. So they met five months ago. They started dating on the 21st of um, September. That's exactly a month ago, okay? He's telling her he loves her. He's in love with her. And he wants to marry her in like six years and have a family. And he wants to, they, he, when he's talking about them moving in now. But also the thing that really got to me was the fact that he's really jealous. So when she talks about an ex, he goes from like one to 10, basically zero to 60. And he gets really livid. That right there, like just set off a red flag to me. You know what I'm saying? When men act like that, that's like the very first warning sign of girl, Put your sneakers on, bitch, and run like you on that motherfucking track, okay? Because that's how it starts off. You know what I'm saying? He's acting like, oh, he loves you. He want to move in with you. And then that's where he wants to control you. You guys have only been with each other for a month. And I'm I'm not even going to say y'all are boyfriend and girlfriend because that's only a month ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, today's the... Well, I'm doing this video. It's the 23rd. But, you know what I'm saying? That's, tw that's still a month ago, Okay. So to me, it's like, okay, so you notice in his jealous, in his jealous ways and his signs, that's just the very beginning because then it gets worse than that. And then they start getting very like, um, mentally abusive, meaning they think they yell at you, they curse you out, they say rude things. Okay. And then it gets to be where it's physical and then to want to move in with you after a month, that's where the controlling starts. So what he's trying to do in my eyes is he's trying to kind of like manipulate you and control you by telling you he loves you. He's in love with you. I want to get married. I want to raise a family. I want to do this and do that. He's basically saying the things that he feels like you want to hear. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. Love is something that's not to be played with, okay? Being in love with somebody is cool. You can always be in love with somebody before you love them or you can lust them. You know what I'm saying? And then you can be in love with somebody and love them as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like with me, I love my husband and I'm in love with him. You know what I'm saying? But look how long it's been. Now... Me personally, like you said, y'all are grown, but y'all are not grown. 19 is not grown. And I'm sorry, I wouldn't dare move in with anybody after knowing them or just being with them for a month. Even though y'all have known each other for five months, that still is not long enough. Like, you still seeing his representative side. Meaning, you know how you meet somebody, and I say this to you guys all the time. You know how you meet somebody, right? And they real nice, you know what I'm saying? They really, really nice for like a while. And then you start seeing like their true person come out you you know what I'm saying you see that they're slobs you see that they they don't wash their hands you see that they pick their nose you see that they fart all the time or whatever you just start noticing things about them and gradually that's because the first person that you met when you first met them that was their representative because if they would not have put on their representative you would not have wanted to fuck with them like you know what I'm saying why would you want to fuck with somebody that's rude mean nasty dirty a slob you know what I'm saying that would just like be a big turn off and you would never fuck with them again so you gradually start seeing who they really are. You know what I mean? So with him, you are still with his representative. But he's not really doing a really good um, cover-up with it because he is letting you know already that he's a danger. Meaning, if you're telling me that he goes from 1 to 10 real quick, bitch, could you imagine if y'all live together and he's, he feel like he was doing something? You in, you in the house with him? Girl, no. 
let me tell you something it's always nice to have love and it's always nice to be in a relationship but sometimes those relationships like this one that you're explaining to me is not the ones that you want to be dealing with okay you know what i'm saying yeah he might be a mama's boy or whatever but just because he's a mama's boy don't mean that's why he's nice and he's sweet and he loves you and all this shit nah that's not so because mama's boys could be the worst kind i got two of them motherfuckers okay and they are very overprotective, okay? And then they can be very rude and very mean, too, at the same time. But they are very overprotective over me. Over me. Sometimes it's just too much overprotection. And I just be like... And I just be like, oh, my God, please chill the fuck out, okay? Like, on some real shit, you motherfuckers, please chill the fuck out. But that's, a, that's just like a red flag right there. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to move in with him. You don't need to move so fast. I'm pretty sure you don't love him either. Um, because if you did, you wouldn't be coming to me about the shit. Do I think he's real? And, and, and do I think he's moving too fast? Bitch, yes. I don't think he's real. And yes, I think he's moving too fast. And I think that he has um, other things up his sleeve. Like a whole different hidden agenda that your ass just don't know about. How you know y'all move in together? Okay, so y'all want to move in together. Y'all got this apartment together or whatnot or whatever. He's like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to pay these bills. Then, bitch, you, you stuck with paying every fucking thing. And this nigga is beating your ass and treating you all types of ways. Girl, bye. I have seen too many different stories and watched too many different Lifetime movies and whatever to let you know right now, girl, put your track shoes on, bitch, and run for the motherfucking border, okay? Run as fast as you can. It's only been a month. Y'all ain't even in a relationship. Y'all still getting to know each other. And from the looks of things and from what I've been reading so far, he is not one that you would really want to fucking move into, move in with. Zero to 60 real fucking quick, girl, please. Mm -mm. And then you really can't talk about, like, I don't, one thing I don't like, it's very unattractive. A really jealous man. Like, that shit is such a turn off because that makes you feel like you really cannot talk to him about anything because you know that he's so jealous and the type of person that he is, he's going to get upset and he's going to show his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's cool to be somewhat jealous, like, in a cute way. Like, you know what I'm saying? You out in public and, you know, he, he calls you closer because the next dude is looking at you. But there is a jealous, like, where they get angry jealous and they feel like you're always doing something behind their back when you're not and those are the abusive ones you know what i'm saying so that right there livid and getting really jealous and going from one to ten or you should say zero to sixty girl is a red flag and those are signs right there to let you know like look girlfriend go if he really do care about you then that's great i don't really know to be honest my my feelings towards him right now is just to just like don't be in a relationship with him where you're living together, okay? If you want to get to know him more, then please, by all means, do so. But all of that, you know what? I, I hate when men come to, to women and be like, yeah, I want to marry you and have kids. Like, they feel like when they tell us that shit, like, we're supposed to get tickled pink and get all wet and moist in our underwear and be like, oh, my God, I love him. Like, I'm going to let him borrow my car. I'm going to give him the keys to my account. I'm going to give him that my bank account number all this shit. Like, nigga, when you start talking to me like, oh, I want to marry you and have kids with you and all this shit real quick, I'll be like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, hmm, okay, do please, like, you just fake as they fucking come. I could care less if you... No, thank you. So, girl, take those sides and run. Bitch, run real fast, okay? Put them track shoes on, bitch, and run as fast as you can. So, as you guys noticed, I have done four. I think this is the fourth one. I did the one about the tarot card reading, the one about being accepted as her family, the one about this guy's red flag, and this is the fourth one. So, oh, my God, we're on a roll. Hello. Okay, so, hi, my name is... Okay, so she didn't change her name. Hi, my name is Lucy. I'm going to change it. I'm 27. I have been married for nine years. We own our own home, and we pretty much had everything together to be so young. We have two girls and a baby on the way. My husband has always been a great provider and father, but he hurt himself two weeks ago. Bad. Four months to a year for healing time. It's going to be. He is being very hard on himself, and I keep telling him everything will be fine. But I get it. But I get it. He doesn't want to hear that. But I also don't want to attend pity parties. We have little support and we are used to that and we both come from fucked up backgrounds. How can I let him know I'm here for him but I'm not going to pity him or feed into the negative things? There is so much more that goes to this. I'm just not being me and I'm just not being me and insensitive 
Sorry for the run-ons. P.S. Love the channel. Send love from the mountains of Pennsylvania. So basically, Lucy's husband is a provider. They have two young, um, they have two girls and a baby on the way. They have their own home, but he hurt himself two weeks ago, probably on a job, and it's going to take about four months to a year for the healing process. And so her husband is just like shooting himself down, just kicking himself in the dirt, being hard on himself, you know, worrying about finances and things like that. And she's trying to make, she's trying to let him know like things are going to be okay. We're going to be all right. But He's not getting it. And she doesn't, she's tired of the pity party. I totally get it. You know what? I hate that when people, you know, you, you tell them everything is going to be okay. You tell them like numerous of times, numerous of times. And they just still with the, oh, that shit is, it's irritating after all. Like, I know you hurt, dude. I understand your, your pain, but I'm here for you. And we're going to get through this together. But no matter how much you tell them, they still crying about the shit. Like, maybe because I'm, I'm not, I'm not an insensitive person, but. I just like maybe I am because I'm the type of person like I hate to hear people crying like meaning tears tears when they come down your face they don't make noise so why do you have to be like <gasps> like do you have to fucking do that shit like it's irritating like when my daughter cries she's 10 years old like I'd be like mumsy just cry you don't have to make noise just cry let the tears flow and just cry like you don't have to make noise. Like, that shit's irritating to me. And it's not that I'm insensitive, but it's like, okay, I'm, I'm sympathetic to you, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have the pity party neither. Like, grow the fuck up, grow some balls, stand up on your own two feet and get over it. The, this, this is a tough world out here, Cookie. Get on with it, okay? If you want to be weak like this, you're going to crumble. That's how I be, okay? I'm not insensitive. I'm a very sensitive person, but after a while, it's like, listen, God damn it. Just get over it already. Get the fuck over it. So, I understand where she's coming from. And sometimes, like I said to you guys a couple weeks ago, you can't be so sensitive to a person and talk to them certain kind of ways to make them feel better and tell them to help themselves. You have to, some people, you have to just combat with them, not even combat with them, but give them tough love. Like, listen, I understand how you feel, and I know that you're hurt. I don't really totally understand, like I don't feel your pain, but I understand what you're going through because we're going through this together, but we're a team and we're going to get through this together. And I need you to pull it together because we're having another baby and we have two already here. And even though you're hurt, I need you to be strong mentally for me. You need to let him know like his non-strong attitude right now is fucking tearing you down. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we have pity, we have sympathy for you, but listen, Regardless if you can't move around, we're going to be all right. We have gotten through way worse. We're going to be okay. All right? We are going to be all right. Just because it may be four months to a year, you don't know how long the process is going to be. We're going to be all right because we are tough. We are strong individuals, and we're going to get through this together. But what I need for you to do is to stop kicking yourself down and stop being hard on yourself. Because all this negativity, all this negative thought and pity and crying about it is not making it any better. It's actually making it 100 times worse. The more positive attitude that you have about something is the better you're going to heal. You understand what I'm saying, you guys? Like... Do you really think that I like to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go for a walk? I do this because my knee hurts. You know what I'm saying? I cry about it. I can cry about it all fucking day, you guys. But that's not going to make the whole fucking process and my knee feel better. So what the fuck do I do? I get the fuck up early in the morning and I go for a walk because I know that this is going to make me a better person and this is going to make me feel better. You know what I'm saying? I take it and I, and I go with it and I'm just over it. I'm over the pain and I'm over the heartache of it and I just go about my business. And that's what you have to do to some people. You can't always pity them. You can't always give them sympathy. Maybe once or twice I can do that, but I'm not going to constantly do that to, for you because that shit is annoying as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So let him know, listen, we're going to get through this. And you're going to have to give him a tough love. Not, nah, babe. We're going to get through this. Put your harsh, stern voice on, bitch. Put your motherfucking stern voice on, Lucy, and let that nigga know, listen, I understand how you're feeling maybe financially and you're the sole provider, but we are going to get through this. Haven't we always gotten through it? We haven't always been on the top of the world. We have worked our way up and we're going to get through this because we are a team. And that's what we do. So what I'm going to need you to do is stop thinking negative and think positive. Because positive thinking always has a positive outlook. Okay? Bottom line, that's all there is to it. You know, a lot of people think that we might be insensitive because we don't boo-hoo and we don't cry about this shit. But, hey, I'm not an insensitive person. I just, listen, I think that there's a time and place for crying. And I think, like, there's a length to crying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
get over it. Sometimes you have to get over shit because the more you be depressed about the shit, the longer it's just going to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? The more you be crying about shit that's going on in your life, the more it's going to fuck with you. So what I'm saying is get the fuck over it. Tell him to get the fuck over it and move on. Bottom line. He'll be all right. So on that note, you guys, I hope you, do, you guys enjoyed this real talk. I'm going to get ready. I got to go to the post office and mail out some of these wigs. I thank you guys, as always, for staying tuned with me. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumb this video up because you love me so much. As I love you guys, and I'll see you in a soon come video.